When I am quiet, it means absolutely so happy. I'm amazed that I'm taking everything in. So enjoy the footage, everyone. <laughs> Look at behind me the sunshine, the palm trees. I'm in Florida and I'm super excited to show you guys my first time and this place is absolutely amazing. I'm here at the American Muscle Car Museum. The grounds are huge, seen military tanks, there's such a big setup and I'm super pumped because I'm going to be meeting up with Ed inside and actually what's in there, what is the collection all about and exactly what kind of classics we've got in here. Not just any classics, but American muscle classics. <laughs> There's Ed, how's it going? Hello, welcome to Melbourne, Florida, and welcome to the American Muscle Car Museum. Ed, this place is phenomenal. There's a lot to look at. As you can see outside, we, you know, a large 42 acre campus, spec built just for Mark Pylock's car collection here at the American Muscle Car Museum. And right in the front showroom, we've got a lot of Ford GTs, and a lot of stuff to look at. I'm excited. I have heard so much about the collection throughout okay. my travels. Many yes. people have told us, before we have a look at the fabulous cars here, tell me about Mark. Absolutely. Mark Pylock is the founder and owner of the American Muscle Car Museum, and his lifelong dream has been to share, educate, and in a sense keep it going for the younger generations as far as his passion. Right now we currently have over 457 cars and we're very proud that we keep them in running and driving condition. Not all collections do that and there's a high cost to doing that. So what do we do here at the American Muscle Car Museum? Because we're not open every day or open to the public, but aha, we're open like a baseball or a football stadium. And what I mean by that is we have an event, you can check the website, look into it, you know, sign up for it, tickets for it. And the four ways we do that, we do four main things here at the American Muscle Car Museum. We do fundraising for Brevard County right here, where 100% of that money raised goes directly to them charities. And just for an example, we raise about $1.5 million per year that goes to them charities. So since 2016, when we opened this, over $10 million has been raised for local charities right here in Brevard County. Wow, congratulations. That is huge. And that's, that's all Mark's brainchild, and it's fantastic. And it helps, you see it actually help, which is fantastic. Second thing is we do auto events. You can see the large grounds outside. We can fit 600 cars on the hard surface plus the grass surface. So we do large car shows, national car shows, and also we'll do autocross events for the local car clubs. It could be the Porsche Club, the Corvette Club, the BMW Club. A lot of fun there. One of my favorite ones is the educational part of it. Kids first grade to college age. We've set, set up tours, about a two hour tour. Where we, we make it a kid friendly tour. <laughs> Tell them about it. You know, show them the cars. Let them sit in a few cars. It's amazing how the light bulb starts to go off. Yeah. And it's, what's neat is the parents really get involved at that point. So along with that, the last thing is we do thank you events. Thank you events, I mean by for police, fire, 911, people that take care of us. And off our, our largest event for the year is Veterans Day Open House for Veterans and their families. Nice. We usually have over 4,000 people come in where it's free to them just to come in and, hey, thank you for the quality of life we have here. Wow. So in a sense, not being open to the public, we still have over 100 days a year where we have something going on here. I'm so glad you told me that because when I was looking in about information about the place, I was like, it's not open to the public, you know, it's a collection. Mm -hmm. Who is this Mark person, yeah. you know? Yeah. What's so special about this collection for starters, besides being beautiful cars, that not anyone can just walk in and enjoy them. But after mentioning the charities, the events, and the give back to the community and the services and the yes. veterans as well, that is huge and already that tells me volumes about the kind of person Mark is. Well and also you think of, of what he done to in a sense achieve this. Obviously this is a great cost. Um, one of his companies is PF Incorporated or Pet Flavors and he makes the soft chew flavoring for in a sense pet medicines, pet vaccines and a lot of that's worldwide. So in a sense we you know 
to give back to the animals, to give back to humans, to everything else. It's just a wonderful place to be a part of. It truly is. He sounds like a swell guy. And I hope that throughout my travels, one day I'll be able to meet him. Absolutely. And get him on the channel because, I mean, not only an entrepreneur, but an absolute, just a charitable person. Yes. And he also has a heavy Boston accent, so he'll, oh, say, he's, he's, he'll say cars differently. It'll be with a K-A-A-R, car. But no, wonderful man. I have to <clears throat> meet him, but you know what? I'm so glad I am here. So thank you for sure. allowing me to come here <clears throat> to such a private collection, a privately owned collection. Yes. There was a lot to see. But we've just walked into the showroom. We've walked into the showroom, and first thing that greets you is a circle of four GTs. In the front turntable, you see the number 16 of the red car. That's probably one of our actually one of our rarest and most valuable cars. 1966 Allen Mann prototype car that they had built for Ford Motor Company when they were doing the racing as far as trying to compete with Ford versus Ferrari. Let's walk over here and take a little closer look. You know, Ed, recently <coughs> I watched again for I think the I don't know how many times over and over again, Ford versus Ferrari. Yes. That's a great movie. I love that movie. I came in here, that's the first thing I thought of just because of all the GTIC, the GTC, I'm sorry. But you see this car here. This is one of the aluminum body prototypes, small block Ford. And in a sense, they were trying to compete and win the Le Mans. Um, they built two of these prototypes, and this is the AMG-1, or the number one they built. So in a sense, this is a very rare piece of history. Now this placed sixth in the time trials in 1966 at Le Mans. However, Ford decided to go with Carroll Shelby's fiberglass body and the 427 cars, and the rest is history. But it's still neat to have this actual car here. And when you truly look at it, I'm gonna have you step up here a second. I mean, this is a very lightweight aluminum body. You know, and the people that drove these cars, I mean, they really were in the racing. Not a whole lot of creature comforts in there. This is such a big part of history, of Ford history, of automotive history, because this was the pilot. Well, this was the pilot, and you also think of, the, in a sense, the technology, say the F1 racing they have out now. All the computerized, everything they have. You look at something like this, hey, here's the fuel gauge for this thing. Wow. You know, we've got five gallons, 15 gallons, so forth, and going up. You know, another thing is with all the cars, is Mark has a lot of documentation. I mean, some of this here, you know, the photo of it actually at Le Mans. You know, you see some of the history and stuff. It's just incredible. You know, to, but to be able to share this car, I mean, with, with you, with the public, it's amazing. And it's a real piece of history. Um, but as you come around the circle here, we have 2005 and 2006 Ford GTs. Now, here's another thing that I didn't mention earlier, but I would like to also mention we have over 275 cars with less than 100 original miles. So as you look at this silver one here in the Quicksilver, that has five original miles on it. Five original miles? Five original miles. And what year is this one? This one here would be a 2005. This is done in a Quicksilver. But as you come around the circle here, you have the Mark IV black and Centennial white. One thing super cool about the 2005 white, it has the standard wheels on it. So many of them had the optional wheels on it. You know, and this one here also has nine original miles on this car. Here's a Tunskin Gray, which I think is the best color of the 2005, 2006, where it really shows off the body lines on it. Now, this one has a little higher miles on it. This one has 93 miles on it. <laughs> That's high? Yeah. <laughs> How does he go about, I mean, he, he's obviously a very avid car guy. He loves this. Yes. Does he have someone who goes out there and hunts for these very rare cars? Well, I can say it this way in a sense. The buck stops with him and it's his choice. Well, I, I However, we do have people, say go. like at Barrett Jackson or Meekum or stuff like that, that kind of watch. And we actually have a lot of people get a hold of us. Because okay. in a sense, they know, hey, we have this here. Because this is all eight production colors of the 2005-2006. Now, they made two specialty colors, which... You know, we don't have, but however, Ford Performance has told us he has the largest Ford GT collection in the world, and that's coming from Ford. You come over here and you look at the, which is, they call them the second generation or the modern generations of these. You know, these are from 2017 to 2022. These three here are actually part of the Heritage Edition, where they did a paint scheme going back to the same colors that were on the Le Mans winning cars. 
I mean, the heritage blue with the orange is just fantastic oh, looking. And this would honor the 1968 edition. You come the 2017 Ford GT here, this would have been, in a sense, the winning ones by Bruce, Bruce McLaren at the time, and this honors his number two car. And it's just so different, the aerodynamics involved in here from the vents to the side vents, they're made so differently, it's, it's so unique, it's, I'm absolutely speechless. And then a name that everyone should be very familiar with, A.J. Foyt was one of the winning drivers in 1967, and this would have been the color scheme on his car. The driver along with him was Dan Gurney, also another famous driver. Yes. I hope that my camera is doing these beautiful machines justice, everybody. Mm. This place is definitely something to see. Now, Ed, someone sitting at home and they want to come and visit. I know you've got events throughout the year. How can people become involved with that? How can they try what, to come here? Is there an open house? What you can do is you can look on our website and it'll have an events tab. Just scroll down and you can see what's coming up. And usually we try to do the next six months out so you can see what's coming up. And those events are open to spectators as well? Um, you can purchase a ticket. Okay. And usually it's the charities, the money goes directly to them, something like that. If we have an event like a car show or something like that, information will be how to do that right on the website. Um, and if you're local to the area... The screen, everybody. Oh, yep. oh, sorry to interrupt there. <laughs> uh, if you're local to the area, one thing we love to do with, in a sense, younger generation, you have you know, kids in private school, public school, a kids group. If we can get a group of at least 20 people together, get a hold of our social media, his info is on there, set up a school tour. I mean, that's a lot of fun for the kids. Um, some of the Shelby cars here, 1962 50th anniversary from Shelby America. And when, nine, when did the collection begin? Well, probably I'd have to say when Mark was a very young person and collected a lot of matchbox cars. <laughs> And it just slowly grew through his high school and college days. Um, through school, his uncle owned a salvage yard, and he also worked in a body shop. You know, and through that time, it grew and grew and grew. In his senior year in high school, he was an exchange student in Germany. So that's where his love for Porsches came in. And we're going to see a whole lot of them shortly. So. so he didn't just like cars and appreciate the beauty of these. He's actually gotten his hands dirty, and he knows the mechanics and building these and restoring them. Yeah, and what's nice about that is say we've got a car to work out in a shop. Hey, Mark, we need to do this, this, and this. He understands where we're coming from, and that's, that's huge. That is huge. Yes. Often when people think of such large collections like this, they think, okay, you know, it's money and stuff, but yeah. he's been so passionate. He's really been involved part of everything. Absolutely. From the I mean, he doesn't have to maintain the cars. He doesn't have to have an events. He could just stick them in a the building, exactly. but that's not the case at all. You know, it's nice to be able to share them. Uh, great story on this 1966 427 Cobra. This is this is the real deal here. Tell me about this, Ed. This car has a great story to it. This was sold new at Tasca Ford, and this was purchased for a high school graduation present. Wow. Yeah. The young man drove it for two years and then traded it off for a 68 Corvette for $1,500 at the time. And he's regretted that decision ever since. I yes. uh, The neat thing about this, <laughs> this was actually not a competition model. And what I mean by that is it came without the side pipes that exhaust under. Roll bar, hood scoop, and side pipes were later added at a restoration in the mid-70s. But you see this car up close, and this is incredible. And one thing I'd like to show you, I was mentioning about documentation. Here is a laminated copy of the actual window sticker. You know, and you're talking about $6,700 plus. Wow. And it come right across the top. You know, Cobra Sport Roadster, eight cylinder, Tasca Ford. This is, you know, people nowadays, there's a lot of um, kit cars. Yes, there is. Ford certified kit cars for the Shelby Cobras <clears throat> just because they are so popular and so rare and expensive. Not everybody can have. From what I've read, it's probably the most produced car as far as a kit car or form like that. We've actually had people building one of these cars and want to come in, hey, can I look over yours and check it out or can you send me photos and we'll help where we can on that. Um, here again, with there's only three of us in the shop, there's not a lot of time for doing that, but we help where we can. Only three of you, place looks spectacular, can I just say that? Well, there was a lot to upkeep and maintenance. Speaking of maintenance, 
Um, we do have one person that his, he is dedicated strictly to take caring outside. And you've seen there's 42 acres there. Hey, and we're in Florida, so growing season's all year long. There's no downtime with nope. snow or something like that. You know, his job is to mow, fertilize, take care of things, insect control, trim the trees, trim everything there. Uh, and his name is Claire, and that's his full-time job. You also got to wonder, we have events here. How do we do that with just a small staff? Yes. We have a large group of volunteers. Nice. Most of them are retirees, most of them are couples, and they help out. As you can see coming in, help out for, you know, maybe parking, coming in the door, assisting with food, or just maintaining. And that's huge. When they can see that it's for a good cause. Right. When they can see they're going to be amongst beautiful classics. Mm -hmm. And car lovers. Absolutely. Who wouldn't want to volunteer. Yeah. Part of the Shelby collection here is we have one of the 1999 Shelby Series 1s. Now these are one of the cars that Shelby built from the ground up. And what I mean by that is he didn't modify a Ford. He didn't modify a Dodge. This was his own creation. The frame stiffness on these was incredible. And they had the right direction going for them. And what I mean by that, if, have you heard of a Hertz rating? Yes. Hertz rating on this particular car was over 50. At the time, by comparable, you know, say like a 2000 Corvette was 24 to 27, whether it's a coupe convertible. So this is a very stiff car. Um, however, they had a lot of things to work out. And as you can understand with trying to build supercars, there's always issues. There's always money going on there. What, do you know some of the issues that he might have had with this? The body panels, they had a lot of problems with making them fit. A lot of problems with, in a sense, the paint coming off and stuff like that. At the time, Carol was going through a lot of health issues. Okay. And they... Uh, intended to produce you know quite a few of these cars but they only ended up doing 249 of them some of the extremely rare ones are the supercharged version and then you come behind it you see some of the coca-cola memorabilia the gas pumps was carol's health really related starting off with his eyes as it was seen in the movies my curiosity, uh, everyone. <laughs> start out with his heart with his heart and that's why in a sense he could not race any longer after winning the le mans he got into various things um, chicken farming, chili cook-offs, something like that. Um, eventually had a heart transplant later in life. So, wow. But, you know, in a sense, you think about, you hear the name, he's made such a large footprint in, in what he's done. Absolutely. And of course, you know, we have to have the vintage Coke machines. <laughs> You've got to have the vintage Coke machines. <laughs> and then we've got some bikes as well. These are Wizard bicycles. Um, particular ones here, we've got a 51 Ambassador and a 1948. You see the, the, I call them the electric bikes out nowadays. You know, since they were doing the, you know, motorized fuel ones here quite a long time ago. And these were about $100 a piece back then, which you think back then, that was quite a bit of money. It would have been. Two-stroke motor? Yes. Okay. And then we have one of the continuation cars that they built, 10 of these. This is number eight. And you can see the craftsmanship in the engine as far as the tube headers. And let me ask you a question now. You see them two steel bends, excuse me, aluminum bends in the back. What do you think those are for? I was going to say oil, but... Part of the procedures or the protocol they had at the time is one of the rules was they had to have a place to store luggage. Now, why? I don't know, but that was part of the rules they had to have. So there you have it. That would be the luggage, okay. Yeah. But, is it, isn't but they're that, racing, uh, yes. There's nothing there. Uh, spare tires up under there. Spare tires yes. up at the front, okay. Well, you know what? They still made it look darn good, didn't they? They really <laughs> did. <laughs> and I mean, look at it. You've got the, you know, the hump in it because these, look at how small these cars are. Uh, do you know the engine? What engine am I This looking would have at? a 427 in it. I'm absolutely loving what they've done here with the exhaust pipes. Yeah. And as a sense, you know, it's very well known, but GT40 came from, had to be 40 inches tall. Here's a historic picture that actually one had a friend gave me. You got Ken Miles, Carol Shelby, and this was um, Shelby's machinist, and his name was Steele Thurkinson, and it was part of his family friends that gave us some pictures that nobody else has, so that was pretty neat to see. Nice. And of course, you look up on the wall, we've got some of the balloon tire bicycles. Forty-two acres. We've only stepped inside one room, everybody. But you know that this is exactly what people were telling me about, how yeah. 
it's grand, it's massive, and you're going to see things in there you've never seen before. Now we're coming over to the west half of the front showroom. We've got his antique boat motor collection. This starts out with 1915, and you can see through some of the years, ended up in 1956 in the blue motor there. And actually, if you look up on the wall, you can see what they would call come of them. You can look up on the wall and see where some of them would be kind of like a grab and go, mounted to a piece of wood. In that same piece of wood, you can see the red and the silver where the gas and oil would actually come with it. So you could put it in your trunk or in your truck and you'd be ready to go with a boat motor. And that's how they would, be, they would sell it? Correct. I love vintage and antique things, everybody. And <clears throat> I have to say that I've never seen an antique boat motor before. <laughs> yeah. Well, you look at some of them, just the, the brass and the polish and you know, all of it, it's just incredible. This is beautiful, what do you see? And we come back to some more of the Heritage Edition cars. You remember the number 16 we were just looking at on the turntable. In 2022, they came out with an Allen Mann Heritage Edition. It's gorgeous. I don't think it'd be fair not to open on the door on this one. We already opened the door on this one. Exactly. When I am quiet, it means yeah. I'm absolutely so happy. I'm amazed and I'm taking everything in. So enjoy the footage, everyone. <laughs> but you look at this, this looks like you're sitting into a modern, you know, airplane cockpit. This car's ready to go. Wow. And you can see the mileage right on it, the dash right there. 20 miles, everybody. Yes. 20 miles. <laughs> Look at this, straight from the factory, the plastic has not even come off. And this has got twin turbos. And also if you turn right on, you're right there, look at the door panel, they have the number 16 right into the carbon fiber. Nice. I don't know how well that'll show up or not. Oh, it's showing up great. Look at that. Why the four GTs? Obviously they're a beautiful car. They're a beautiful car. Why does he collect them? He just yes. loves them. You know, <laughs> carbon fiber is just incredible. The, the components they use, the structure and substrates, you know, and all the technology in the modern cars. And next to it would be the Daytona 24-hour Heritage Edition. I really like the color scheme on this one. It's beautiful. Something about seeing these machines that are part of history, these cars that we've seen them on the TV, win the races. Yes. And then to see them in this condition, just sitting and looking so beautiful, yet they go, they go really fast and they stick the, to the ground. Yes, they do. A um, couple of the motorcycles we have, 2009 Harley Davidson. Here again, this goes with our low miles. This has four original miles. And in 2009, it was Harley Davidson's 100th anniversary. So in a sense, they had Bruce Springsteen in the E Street Band play at, a, play at a gala. So each member of the band got a motorcycle, and this was Susie Terrell. She was a violinist. So we've got everyone sign the tank on that. So that's a neat piece. <coughs> yeah. you got an Indian motorcycle sign, 1948 Indian motorcycle. And this is something I didn't know about till I met Mark. Goes along with his boat motor collection, a 1930 Indian boat motor. I didn't even know they made boat motors. I didn't either. I know they did the motorcycles. That one I knew I had learned through my travels, yeah. but they actually made boat motors. Okay. Places like this, collections like this, mm -hmm. really need to be appreciated and respected because without it, we wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. The next generations wouldn't know about some of these historical pieces that has really shaped the automotive okay. world. Here's something else that's kind of a quick history lesson. This was donated to us by a man named Mike Phillips. Uh, Mike Phillips has donated his life to detailing cars. He's worked with Meguiar's, Auto Geek, a couple other companies, and he's currently with Dr. Beasley's. He wanted someone to be able to share this rather than just have it sitting in boxes in his office. But what's neat is you look at some of the mirror glaze products that you see, and you see the mirror bright. How did we end up with mirror glaze? Believe it or not, this mirror bright and these early ones, you could shake them up and they'd probably work just fine. This is pre-World War II. 
in America at the time, if you had any products, you had to be very careful about what you sold it for and what products you used because you could not raise the price. They had determined they weren't making any money, so they changed the name to Mirror Glaze and, aha, a brand new product, then we could put the price at what we want. And this is, was to shine up the cars? Is shine up the works? cars, detail the cars. I mean, you could see some hand polish here, you know, some woodwork cleaner I here. I wonder what the ingredients would be. There'd be a lot less chemicals than it is today, obviously. There'd be a lot less chemicals. I mean, it sounds terrible. You could probably put a straw in it and drink it and live through it. Compared to today, it'd probably kill you. It's but it's neat to see, like, the, the mirror glaze, the liquid the glass. Yes, the turtle wax, just to change us through the years. What's this thing right here? That would be a, an early, early uh, paint mill thickness gauge. So you could see how thick the paint was on your car. You know, you can see, like, the early wool pads. Uh, mid 60s woolless wonder in the box there the box is looking pretty tough but it's still there and it's just a neat piece if you love your cars you need them to stay clean and shine and this was no different decades and decades ago no but the kind of old mcguire's one yeah. but i thought that'd be something neat just take a quick look at it oh absolutely and we come around here to the corner and we got three, in a sense, I call them stable Mustangs. The, of course, they're horses, but this is something that you really would know a Mustang for. In the Grabber Blue 1970, a Boss 429 Mustang. Gorgeous car. The blue stands out on them. And at the time when I'm saying I was growing up as a teenager, I didn't like it, white interiors. But I see this now, and I think it's just, you know, really fits the car. Oh, it really does. This is a beautiful color. And these were modified by a company called Carcraft after they left Ford, where they did all the modifications and went come back to the Ford dealers to be sold. But you see how much room this takes up here. The modifications they had to do, you know, just to the shock towers to make this motor fit, relocate the battery that's usually here to the trunk. That's a lot of motor. We have the Marty report on it, the deluxe there. And then we actually have the build sheets behind it there. Mark been approached about selling something. Have people wanted to buy stuff from him? Constantly. Oh, that's what I thought. So he's not a guy that sells a whole lot of cars. He's donated some cars. But for the most part, he when he buys it, he likes it. Um, next to it's a 1970 Ford Boss 302. This is done in Grabber Orange. I like these colors, it's beautiful. I go to car shows and often I come across people who've got something very rare and it'll be like one at the yeah. entire show. And today here I am amongst such rare yeah. cars. It's, yeah, it's amazing, it's absolutely yeah. amazing everyone. Here is our rarest Mustang. I was gonna say. This is a 1965 <laughs> Shelby GT 350R prototype car. This is one that they would take around to the shows. And they made 12 of these originally just to take around and promote the GT350 coming out. So this is one of those prototype cars. This car is also listed, not only in the Shelby America registry, but in the Shelby Cars in Detail has a nice story about the whole car. And they call this car the final prototype. The final prototype. And where would they take it? Just around the states or at different car shows? In a sense, they would take it to, you know, where they're based out of the time in California. They may take it to Nevada, to Chicago, to Cleveland, anywhere they could promote it to dealers to set up a dealer network. Where is the other 11? We honestly don't know how many are left. There may be one or two out there, but we've been told this could be the last one left. We could be told there's, you know, three more of them out there. Cars like this, it makes you think about what was happening around that time, the crowds gathering to see Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And here it is, so many years on. Well, still I can even remember, <laughs> you know, growing up, I lived in Carroll Stream, Illinois, till I was um, 12 years old. And I can remember neighbors getting a new car. And it might be a station wagon wood green on it, but still, all the neighbors would come check it yeah. out. And you just don't see that anymore. That's true. That's hey. true. Now, in the front showroom here, this is where we would start our fundraisers that we would have. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. In a sense, we may have under the Ford sign over there some food and so forth and have volunteers serving that. On the other side, on the mobile gas, we'll have soft drinks. And Mark provides all that, and that's at his cost, oh, wow. just to help the charities out. Because you think about it, if a charity went somewhere and rented a conference room or a conference center, you have several thousand dollars just in renting it. And then the food, then they have entertainment. If they do it here, all of it goes to them. And right now we have 200 charities on the waiting list just to get in here. I noticed that yeah. on the website. Yes. And we, you know, you feel kind of bad saying, oh, man. <laughs> you feel kind of bad saying that, you know, hey, we can't have you right away, but we're just trying to give everybody a fair chance. It's just oh, going to take time. Absolutely. Uh, and on the stage, we may have a live auction. We may have some of the speakers up there. Um, we've had one of the local sheriffs, Sheriff Ivy, is very popular. He come in and he may auction off some of his ride-alongs. That's a popular item. But, and of course, we've got a bumper car in here. <laughs> What's a bumper <clears throat> car doing here? You tell me about this. Well, it wouldn't be fair to have the bumper car with it at least having you sit in the bumper car. I would love to sit inside this bumper car. <laughs> <clears throat> now tell me what a bumper car is sitting amongst this rare collection. This is a piece of history or memorabilia. You know, someone that might have been growing up in the 50s or 60s and, and go to a state fair, there would be a bumper car and stuff. And these were so much fun to ride on. And it's just part of what you had at the time. Everything classic looks better, everybody. I have been to the bumper cars. I have, I've got kids, I've seen them. Never in my life have I ever sat in one that is as beautiful and as comfortable as this. Why can't they, can't they just continue making bumper cars like this? I have no idea. <laughs> Look at this, this is... And that's Every... what it's about, isn't it? When you have people get together, whether it's for a charity, a gathering, especially amongst classics, to take them back down memory lane. Well, have you ever seen anybody sitting in a bumper car that didn't have a smile on their face? No. Me neither. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is... Now, are you ready to go in the back building? I am. Okay. I'm so excited, You're everyone. So excited. This has been such a treat. Let's go see what's in the back. Before we go into <clears> the other room, let us remind everyone, Ed just told me, that that there is the only electric car in the collection. Yeah. And I know that's going to make a lot of you smile at home. Okay. <laughs> um, one thing I'd like to share with you is up top, we held an Honor Flight fundraiser event. At that one, we raised over $100,000 for that particular event in the sense that they gave us a flag from the Space Coast Honor Flight for doing that. That was something that makes you tear up. Is Mark's family involved with the museum as well? Um, his wife is here, you know, quite a bit for the events. Um, they have a young son, they're very busy on that. You know, in a sense, he tries to keep and do very many things with his family. That's why he's not here today. He's traveling with them right now. But nice. when, he's, when he's in town, absolutely. He's a family man. He mm. loves animals. Yes. And he does all these great charity organizations. Oh my goodness, everybody. <laughs> Okay, what I'm going to do is leave the lights off. Smile. Yeah. The lights keep to be off and I can still see what's going on here. Right. Wow. Leave the lights off for just a minute and we can talk about it. You see a lot of the neon signs. You know, quite a few of them are original, restored. There's some reproduction out there, but you look at it like a Dr. Pepper, a Valvoline, a Packard, you know, all of them you see out there. Now you also look, how big is this building? East to west or long ways is 500 feet. From where we just did, walked into the back is and 180. When I first walked in, yeah. I looked at the showroom and I was amazed. And then I said, but this place is so big. Yeah. And it goes, relax, when yeah. there is a lot more. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, pictures don't do the place justice. No, it really doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I have been seeing a lot of pictures online, but they don't do it justice because, I mean, we've yeah. got at least three different aisles and then you've got two rows of cars yeah. in each of them. And you've got some in the center, and there is just so yeah. much here. And what we have is wow. the rows that you see, the cars are done in themes, like maybe it'd be a Mustang row, or a Camaro row, or a Shelby row, or an Indy 500 pace car row. Um, in a sense, between the front showroom and this, there's 400 cars. The remainder of the cars in the back maintenance shop. I'm going to go ahead and slowly turn the lights on, and we'll start talking down one of the aisles. Okay. <clears throat> so tempting to keep rolling the footage to show you more of my time 
here at the American Muscle Car Museum. But I'm going to be cheeky and save some for the next video. Tune in tomorrow night for part two, where we check out more of these beautiful muscle cars, see the stories, as well as sit inside some of the most unique concept cars ever made. Stay tuned.